Hey, what's up everyone? It's John from Captain Spear, and uh, right now I'm driving on the freeway, and I haven't done a podcast episode in months, and I figured we need to catch up. It's been a while, and I want to fill you in on what's going on and how I plan to be doing the podcast going forward. Um, basically, I took a hiatus from the podcast just because I wanted to build up the site a little bit more. Um, we're now getting quite a bit of traffic, and I wanted to say thank you. Uh, you know, I've been trying really hard to put up good quality articles and, and try and talk a little bit more fishing. I've been learning a lot about fishing and kind of really integrating it more into my life as I'm trying to transition away uh, from you know just a whole bunch of business things that I've been doing over the last uh, seven years. And I just want to kind of get back into nature and and go fish and, and share it with you guys. So I've been filming a lot for YouTube. I know I haven't put any videos up um, outside of a couple, uh, but I have been getting some pretty good response on the early videos, and I, I can't wait to kind of share more of the newer newer things that I've been doing. I actually just took a trip to Vietnam, uh, Thailand, and Japan. I got back last week. I actually proposed to my girlfriend in uh, Saigon, or uh, Ho Chi Minh City, as they call it now. But if you haven't been to Vietnam, I highly, highly recommend it. It's super, super cheap, cost-effective-wise. The people are, are just super nice, and the food is phenomenal. And I'm talking, you can get a bowl of pho for like a dollar. Um, we went also, so after we went to Saigon, we went up to Hoi An, and that place is like a beachy, very low-key, um, just amazing spot, and we stayed at the, you know, what felt like a five-star resort. I usually always stay in Airbnbs. I, I never stay in, in these kind of more posh uh, establishments, but even that was, I think it was like 35 a person per night. We're talking the best breakfast spread you could ever have, um, plenty of fishing. I actually got into a basket boat and paddled my way into these coconut, freshwater coconut plants, used a piece of string, a piece of fishing line, a, piece, a stick, and some, uh, I think it was, a, it was a fish wrapped around, no hook, and, you know, hand-caught crabs in these coconut plants, which was awesome. Uh, we went up to just north of Hoi An to Da Nang, uh, which is crazy because it's pretty much getting bought up. It looks like a Vegas sort of sorts. There's a whole bunch of these kind of resorts popping up, which is, to me, it kind of detracts from the feel of, of Vietnam. But um, it was interesting to see nonetheless. And then after uh, my girlfriend, her sister, um, her sister's fiance, and her parents went back to the States, I went solo up to Hanoi. And let me tell you, Hanoi is a must-see city. Uh, they have this food dish called bun cha, which was just magical. I thought pho was, was my favorite Vietnamese dish, and that just probably got superseded by um, this bun cha. It just blew my mind. They also have this thing called an egg coffee, which is like a latte, but they use the egg yolk, and it melts in your mouth. It's more of a dessert coffee. It's a little sweet, but every, there's just egg coffee stands all over the place and a funny story there is I was trying to get some fishing in and you know I, I for whatever reason just couldn't get you know somebody to take me out it was you know just plans fell through plans that I booked when I was before the trip just kind of didn't work I walked into this travel agency and I was like I need a fishing trip a guide you know I've tried fishing a couple of times on my own around here just not getting too much luck um, they ended up getting me this old Vespa service where we had some, they picked me up in the morning because there's motorbikes everywhere. Let me just say there's, where we have cars in the States, replace them with, with 10 times the amount of just little 100 to 250 cc motorcycles just zipping by. Kids, you pack four or five people, infants on these, on these things, no helmets. It's, it's kind of a sight to see. It's, it's insane. Um, but I got picked up on this old school Vespa, got some, got some food, and then drove around um, the city, which was really nice to kind of see um, from that perspective. And then we ended up going to this little restaurant that had these fishing ponds, and they had a bamboo cane pole, 
and we just tied on um, a strip to the end of the hook, and you kind of just like dangle, you know, no reel, just dangle it in, hope for the best. And there's a ton of fish, but they weren't biting. For whatever reason, you can just see them, they're gasping for air. It wasn't really the, a natural fishing kind of place, but it was fun to try and catch them. But what, it, what ended up happening was that there was this pretty good size common carp, uh, maybe it was an Asian carp, I can't remember, but it was just kind of, it felt like it was sleeping, but it had its mouth open, kind of pulsating, and I was like, if I could just drop the hook into its mouth and kind of give it a quick little jerk, it'll wake up and I will catch the fish. And it took me about 10 minutes to get this fish, but I ended up actually doing it. And then once I brought it in, you know, I you know, looked at it. It didn't look the healthiest, but uh, it had some of these kind of red spots on it, which I think might have been just because it's not like a natural waterway. It, wasn't, it didn't have a lot of fresh air coming in. But over, but overall, the guy who took the fish out, who owns the restaurant, was like, uh, we're not throwing it back in. You caught it. You own it. And I was, he's like, do you want to eat it? I, was, I looked at my guide, and I was like, I don't really know if I want to eat this one. Um, I'm down. I'm down. If if, uh, if my guide was down, I'll, I'll cut it up and we can fry it. But he, he had a, an idea. He was like, you know, just kind of jokingly, we can sell it at the market. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And it's amazing because back in the day, my cousin Kevin and I, when uh, we were just getting into our like, entrepreneurial journey, uh, he wanted to sell microgreens, which is kind of, you can imagine them being like sprouts, but sprouts of different types of vegetables, like broccoli or, you know, kale. And they're just really new, really nutritious and nutrient-packed uh, sprouts, essentially. And what happened is we, he grew these, and we we're like, oh, how do we sell them? How do we make our first dollar? Because, you know, anytime you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're trying to make your first dollar. And... We cut these microgreens, we put them in little containers, we put them in a tray, put them over ice. Kevin, uh, my cousin, put, printed out this little brochure with, like, this is the, the benefits of them, this is how much they cost, and we basically walked door-to-door in, on Prospect Street in San Diego getting turned down. We got turned down probably like 20-something times, um, you know, people saying, oh, not interested, not interested, it's kind of cool, not interested. But then the last, last restaurant said yes, and that was George's. Uh, the Cove, I believe, the one probably one of the best re- restaurants on that strip, and we made our first dollar, and it was just kind of like a, a pivotal, changing moment, where you know it, we went from just kind of like people who had regular jobs, or Kevin was doing poker, but you know for me it was the biggest shift because it's like I never thought you could sell something and get somebody to give you get you money. Um, fast forward to now, you know, a decade later almost uh this kid was telling me the same thing he's like i've been trying to sell stuff i i've never been able to really get a sale um i've tried selling little things here and there just just hasn't been able to do it and i was like let's go to the market let's get a sign let's pick pick a price and if we can sell this fish for the for two beers we win like we we did ourselves a good one um and i was like how much does two beers cost and he's like well it's probably going to cost about you know, 40 or 50,000 uh, dong, which is uh, the currency. And I was like, okay, cool. So if you want to do negotiation, you have to go up a little bit higher than your target okay price so that when they want to come down and they feel better when they're doing the kind of haggling, you know, we can get it for that price and make sure that we get our end objective, which is the beers. Um, so we took the fish. It was still alive. We, we got on the Vespa. We zipped through. We got to the market. And I swear, he went right up to this lady who was standing, who was selling pork, st- standing right next to this fish mo- lady um, selling fish, uh, just tons and tons of fish, even carp, and was like, had the sign in his hand, and was like, would you buy this fish that we just caught for 65,000 dong? And she was like, 50,000 dong, and I'll do it. He looked at me, and I was like, you take that money. <laughs> and he ended up selling the fish right there and he, his eyes were just like holy cow I just did that and he was like it was so easy and I was like well you know we probably priced it too low because it was that easy but um, we hit our end of, we hit our goal and then uh, we ended up taking that money he took me because he was driving he didn't want to uh, do any kind of 
drinking, which I respect. So we ended up taking that money to a this train track little egg coffee spot and got ourselves two egg coffees. And he paid with the, the money that he earned, and that was it. We enjoyed some some egg coffees while we looked at the tourists on the train tracks, and it was just uh, an amazing little experience. And that was just like one of the highlights of, uh, you know, outside of getting engaged, that was a very fun, meaningful um, moment that I got to, to share in uh, Hanoi. And then after that, I ended up uh, taking a trip out to Bangkok uh, to visit an old buddy, Mike, um, that I haven't seen in, in years. Stayed with him for a while and met up with Tap, who runs BKK Fishing Guide. Dot com and he uh, took me out to two spots. The first spot was this lake where I was able to catch some Asian red tail catfish, a fish that I've been waiting to catch for a long time. And they're just freaking weird. Uh, they definitely aren't slimy. They kind of have this leathery texture, almost like kind of like a shark kind of um, feel to them. Uh, when you pull them out of the water, they're really beautiful, really dark on top, uh, uh, kind of a yellowish white underbelly, massive mouth, almost looks like they're smiling, red tail, and they burp. <laughs> they they freaking burp um, quite quite loudly, <laughs> and it's really cool. Their fight is really nice. Um, and then I was able to actually catch a, an alligator gar as well, which are totally kind of scary to, to grasp, and you have to kind of pin them down like you would an actual alligator. You cover their their face and you kind of hoist down uh, with your hands and kind of pinch their, their mouth down. Um, so I was able to get a picture with that as well. Um, and then I, I took a day off and met, met this really good guy um, uh, on, on the trip. He was a carp fisherman out of Wales and we just bonded uh, pretty well and he was going to do um, Bon Samram, which is a kind of a fishing park in, in Bangkok. Uh, massive, massive reservoir that got filled up with water and they just stock it full of, oh man, it's like 100,000 plus fish. And the thing that you're gonna be catching there is Mekong catfish. And these things are ginormous. If they're one of the largest, I think they are the largest freshwater catfish um, in the world. And you know, it, there's pictures on National Geographic and such where you can catch them. Just, just monsters. Uh, we caught, I caught one, the biggest one I caught was about 120-ish pounds, which is the biggest fish I've ever caught. You know, hopefully one day I can get one of these uh, massive 200 plus pound tunas uh, down by San Diego or, or in Mexico, but it was, it was amazing. And it's weird because it's a stocked lake, right? Both of those, the first place that I went was a stock lake and this one, you know, I've seen the pictures and I thought it was like, we're gonna go down this hidden river and be like Jeremy Wade, but in reality, you, you kind of just go to these spots where you're going to catch a ton of fish <laughs> just because they're, they're stocked. Um, uh, it's cool because we got the bungalow. It had air conditioning, shower, a bed, and then you also have like a patio that goes right over the lake. And you basically have a guide and, you know, you or him are, are casting these big bread balls and within, you know, I think the longest we ever waited was a half an hour, but it, it could be quite, quite fast. You're, and you're have a, if I have a Mekong catfish, that 120 pounder took about 25, 30 minutes to bring in. And it was, it had about six good runs. Um, so I caught a bunch of the Mekong catfish. I caught Siamese carp, a uh, striped catfish. And I think that was the three species. Um, we wanted to catch peacock bass, which was in another lake. So we kind of uh, canceled uh, Bon Samram a little bit early and shot over to this other lake, but you know we had some bites, but nothing, uh, nothing landed in the peacock realm, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, and then after that, just flew back, stopped through uh, Japan really quick, and then uh, came home. But you know, I was gone for a little bit of time, and you know, I'm, I'm still kind of dreaming about it. You know, I, it was a great, great, great experience. If you have the opportunity and you're fortunate enough to to get out to either Vietnam or, or Thailand, definitely hit up Japan. It's a whole another podcast episode. I can go into that one. Um, I, I, this was a quick trip, but I stayed there for two weeks and, and a couple years ago, and I still dream about Japan as well. <laughs> I just love to travel. It's, it's been, I've, been, I've been very lucky, but definitely, definitely hit up uh, BKK Fishing Guide if you're going to go out to Bangkok. He'll set you up just right. I wrote an article about it 
um, on Casper Spear, Casper forward slash fishing dash in dash Bangkok. Definitely give it a read. It shows some of the pictures of the fish that I caught. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to try and get more podcast episodes up, um, more frequently. I have some really good guests that I have recorded. I just need to add it up and I'll be probably try to do some of these kind of more off the cuff, uh, podcast episodes, um, as we go as well. So I, I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know. Hit me up, uh, hit me up if you liked it. Just reach me at John, J-O-N, at captainspear.com and, uh, We'll definitely uh, touch base. And until next time, keep those lines tight, everyone. See ya.